The top stories, ministry says recent visit of Ethiopian Prime Minister to Kenya and Tanzania fruitful. And Scholar says commitment of African leaders remains crucial for accelerating African economic integration. Greetings, dear viewers. Welcome to EBC World with me, Shifara Olako. Now, the recent visit of Prime Minister Abe Ahmed to Kenya and Tanzania proved fruitful in advancing Ethiopia's interests in the energy and aviation industries the Ministry of Foreign Affairs disclosed. Talking to reporters during his weekly media briefing, spokesperson of the ministry, Malla Salam, said the warm welcome accorded to Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed during his visits to Kenya and Tanzania, as well as the subsequent memoranda of understanding inked is evidence of healthy relationships between the countries and growing interests to strengthen ties. In connection to that, Meles stated that the Prime Minister's visit to the stated two countries demonstrated that several attempts to impede Ethiopia's positive role in the region had failed. The briefing also highlighted various diplomatic endeavors of the ministry, including the celebration of the 128th Adwa victory, Ethiopia's participation in the Dubai International Horticultural Expo, and the WTO meeting in the UAE. Meanwhile, State Minister for Foreign Affairs Ms. Ganu Arga received at his office today the Danish ambassador to Ethiopia. The two have exchanged views on bilateral, regional, and global issues of mutual concern. Ambassador Arga assured the Danish ambassador of Ethiopia's commitment to strengthening its cooperation with Denmark in the areas of energy, climate change, and capacity building. Ambassador Arga also welcomed the planned visit of the Foreign Minister of Denmark, Lars Luka Rasmussen, to Ethiopia. The Danish Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade is expected to talk with Ethiopian authorities about ways to promote bilateral and multilateral cooperation on matters of shared concern while he is in the country. Which is located in the Semin Shoah zone of Amhara region. And this is Ankover Palace Road, which is built on top of a hill with a beautiful breath. <laughs> Zerraf, 
Welcome back. You are still watching ABC World. Now, Sri Lankan ambassador to Ethiopia and permanent representative of Sri Lanka to the AU says Ethiopia's Green Legacy Initiative stands as a testimony to that the Go Green program could see a brighter future. The ambassador told ABC World that the initiative remains a robust motivation for other African countries to plant more trees. Tsigastanisa presents the full account as follows. Sri Lanka established diplomatic relations with Ethiopia in 1972. Sri Lanka's first ambassador was appointed to Addis Ababa with residence in Nairobi in December 1972. The Sri Lankan embassy in Addis Ababa was declared open on 2nd of February 2017. Talking to EBC Sri Lankan ambassador to Ethiopia and also permanent representative of Sri Lanka to the AU, Tashanti Kumari Siri, pointed out that Ethiopia and Sri Lanka enjoy long-standing bilateral ties. We have very strong bilateral ties with uh, Ethiopia. A very strong ties for like almost uh, th three decades and historically we are connected with uh, Ethiopia uh, like third century BC there had been delegation from Ethiopia to Sri Lanka and 14th century there are there are a lot of uh, reports about Ethiopian being in, in Sri Lanka even Ibn Battuta the Moroccan traveler has reported uh, about uh, Ethiopian 500 Ethiopians in Sri Lanka so we have a very strong relations and multilaterally we are engaged with, uh, with Ethiopia and also the African Union countries. So we, we closely work with uh, many countries in Africa on several common issues. In relation to the Pengri Legacy Initiative, the ambassador noted that the Pengri Legacy Initiative stands as testimony that the Go Green program could see a brighter future in a bid to a remain robust motivation for other African countries to plant more trees. With this initiative of Green, uh, green uh, Legacy Initiative of uh, Ethiopia, uh, His Excellency the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, I believe uh, you, know, you will plant more and more uh, plants here in this country. It will uh, reflect the motivation for other countries in Africa uh, to plant more and more uh, you know, trees in, in their uh, domestic environment. And also it is a good initiative for other countries, you know, particularly with the countries with uh, small economies and also for uh, you know, health care system and also uh, lack of resources to get example from the, these uh, uh, kind of initiative. Furthermore, he reiterated Sri Lanka's commitment and ambitious vision in order to enhance the forest cover. Sri Lanka also has a kind of a ambitious vicious, uh, vision uh, to enhance our forest cover. Now it's about uh, the, we have got uh, uh, finest rainforest in, in the world. Uh, it's about 25% of the, uh, uh, the land mass is covered by forest in Sri Lanka, but we have a uh, ambitious task of expanding the forest cover up to 30 to uh, 35, uh, 30 to 35 percent to increase. So we need to have a kind of a partnership uh, with, uh, you know, with other countries like Ethiopia, where you have got an experience under this uh, Green Legacy Initiative. I believe uh, uh, in terms of technology transfer, knowledge sharing and all, it will be a uh, partnership uh, approach also in addition to the, your contribution to the, 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 the world environment, I believe. Green Legacy Initiative of Ethiopia, the ambassador says it sure is a great investment for the future. Moving on, an African history scholar emphasizes that the commitment and willingness of African leaders remains crucial for accelerating African economic integration. Historian and researcher on African history, Tagano Gosa, told EBC World that the spirit of Pan-Africanism and the historic Adwa victory serve as a pivotal benchmark for fostering integration among African nations. Jerusalem Batsia presents Goshu Melsel's report as follows. We are calling on everybody to think Africa, act Africa, and prosper Africa. The FCFTA was launched in 2018, aims to enhance economic integration among 54 African Union states by creating a single market for goods and services, promoting free movement of people and capital within Africa. A developmental ticket meant to boost inter-Africa trade 
The FCFTA is more than anything else a means to eliminate trade barriers, thereby speeding up the much hoped continental integration. Talking to ABC World, an African history scholar emphasized that the commitment and willingness of African leaders is crucial for the FCFTA to take off the ground. We just need to have the commitment and will to bring about this uh, one of the ways in which in the Agenda 2063 of African Union, uh, uh, one of the basic arrangement in which African economic integration would be created is thought to be forging this, like removing all these kind of tariffs and barriers in, in, in promoting African uh, uh, trade between African countries. So uh, these tariffs and these tariff barriers of all kind really hindering uh, the African inter uh, the trade between African countries. Tagenu disclosed that inter-African trade is currently at a low point, highlighting the importance of Pan-Africanism and the historic Adwa victory as benchmarks for promoting integration among African nations. One of the ways in which African economic integration, which, which leads to the benefit of African people in elevating poverty, in, in, um, in, in, in creating suitable ground for African economic growth is removing these tax and tariff barriers. If and many countries are ratifying the policies and the policy, policy frameworks and the programs itself by their own parliament, and I think we need to move forward with this one. That is needed, we should draw from the legacy of ADWA because ADWA is about commitment and ADWA is about resolve and that's why ADWA is about resilience you know, of spirit and that commitment is needed from African countries and African leaders. He underlined that removing tax and tariff barriers will create fertile ground for economic integration. Tagenu said the latest visa-free agreement between Ethiopia and Kenya will give this process quite a boost. The human movement uh, around Africa should be lifted soon. And as I, I, saw, I saw currently Kenya is spearheading and some, some other African countries are following in allowing Africans to, to enter Kenya without any uh, visa requirements. And so the issue of very hard visa requirements should be, should be uh, lessened, to be honest. In addressing economic and post-colonial challenges, Africa must undertake significant efforts, the scholar pointed out. Well, the viewers, you have been watching ABC World. Now a quick recap of the top stories. Ministry says recent visits of Ethiopian Prime Minister to Kenya and Tanzania put forward.